Hi, uh, my name is Greg Vanderheiden. I'm from the Trace R&D Center at the I School at the University of Maryland. Uh, and I'm here today to report to you on work carried out under RSA funding to pilot test and develop a technology to make computers easier to pe for people with disabilities to be able to use, uh, including those who have trouble using uh, computers at, at all. The um, <clears throat> original, <clears throat> the project, uh, Auto Personalization Computer Project, uh, started out focusing on auto personalization. Um, and although we've been working with technology and disability for just shy of 50 years, this project really brought home the challenge that many people are facing in using computers and also brought out something critical that we have either overlooked or underestimated in our work to date. In this presentation, I hope to take you through our journey share some of what we learned and to show you what we've come up with to try to address the problems we identified. As I mentioned, the project started out focusing on auto personalization, which is the ability of a computer or other technology to be able to automatically adapt to what you would need. For example, <clears throat> if you sat down to a computer and you were an AT user, it would automatically uh, launch the AT that you need, configure it to be just exactly like you need your AT to be, and then adjust the other settings on the computer to be the way you would like them to be. So essentially, it would automatically personalize the computer to be just like your own personal computer or how you would set up your personal computer. Now, we also have begun working on something new uh, that we just did a proof of concept of, called installation on demand. And um, what this is, is the ability to have the technologies that you need automatically installed if they are not already on the machine that you are sitting down to. So if you go to a library and sit down to a computer, normally you'd have to just sit down to the computer in that uh, resource room upstairs. But with uh, auto personalization and installation on demand, you'd be able to sit down to any computer in the library and Morphic would automatically bring down the AT you need, install it on whichever computer you sat down to, configure that to be exactly the way you want it to be, and then when you were done, it would get rid of it so that you could now use any computer in the library. You could take that one down in the basement where they have the special class tonight and you'd be able to go in, sit down to any computer just like anybody else, and your AT would show up there. Same thing in a school or any place else that has uh, Morphic on its computers, um, uh, job, etc. the AT would show up on the computer you, you want to use. So let's take a look at what that might look like. So um, let's say we have somebody who needs an, an on-screen keyboard. So when they sit down to the computer and they sign in, uh, Morphic would automatically uh, bring up the on-screen keyboard and it would be just the one they want with just the features and set up just the way they would use it. And then when they leave, Morphic would automatically uh, get rid of it. If somebody else came along and they needed to have uh, uh, high contrast and um, a larger size, then Morphic could come along and automatically turn on the high contrast and then change the screen resolution to make everything larger. And again, when they left, it would automatically uh, change it back so the next person would see it being with regular contrast and the regular size um, on the screen. Okay, so the, um, as we are uh, looking at this, what we want to be doing is to be uh, figuring out how to make the computer so that it will uh, automatically uh, adapt and work for the each individual as they uh, as they need it to be okay so as we were doing this one of the things we found was basically three things first of all at the job centers <clears throat> there were many people uh, who used uh, who didn't use assistive technology those people who used AT like screen readers typically didn't come to the AJC's they would instead go to DVR, they would be given their own computer, et cetera. And so 
the people at the AJCs didn't see people uh, very often. Uh, we saw very few instances of anybody ever coming in who actually uh, needed to use assistive technology. The staff at the AJC are not trained in how to uh, train a user on how to use it or how to set it up for them, et cetera. So um, instead, what the AJC saw was lots and lots of people who had trouble using the computer um, weren't AT users, but were definitely unable to use the computers. There's something that um, I used to call uh, TQ, technology quotient, uh, and it's the ability for someone to use technology. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> it's not the same as, as AT, um, because, uh, as, I'm sorry, as, as IQ, because um, it, I know people that are blazingly brighter than I am who can't use their technology. And it's not that they are not smart, they are. They're blazingly smart and they are leaders in their field, etc. They just can't use their technology. And it's not digital literacy either. It's not that they haven't been exposed to it. It's not that they haven't tried. Um, it's sort of like some people can sing and uh, they're just really good. It's just natural. You know, you hear a tune and they can sing it. Uh, or they hear a tune and they can play it. Um, others are not very good, and some people are basically tone deaf. They just plain can't deal with music, they can't sing, etc. Um, some people can draw, and some people can't. And some people can use technology, and they can't. I call it digital affinity. <clears throat> and it's not something um, like literacy, it's just some people have a great difficulty in dealing with and understanding technology. They may be brilliant at other things, um, but technology is, is not one of them. Well, when we have people coming into the AJCs, we would find the same thing. You can find people with disabilities, you find people with at all different levels, with all different types of skills, but if they really have trouble with technology, then they are going to have trouble using computers, and yet we're designing an entire world that depends on them. So what we really needed was something that was simpler, that <clears throat> would help all people that they had coming to their center, who having trouble, who couldn't use the computer well at all, were easily confused, and many were just plain afraid when they sat down to try to use the computer. So we came up with uh, what we would uh, call a, a quick strip. And um, this quick strip is a, a strip on the, on the bottom edge of the uh, computer that uh, allowed you to be able to um, uh, access and use the, the, um, uh, the computer. So uh, here's the quick strip. And um, on here we put commonly used controls. And, uh, for example, if so many of the individuals had trouble with the screen being too small, so they could just come on here and click and it would make things uh, larger. Um, we had individuals uh, who had uh, trouble with, uh, who liked to have high contrast, and so you had it so that they could just click and they could uh, turn on the high contrast. Now, these are all features that are built into Windows, but um, finding them, being aware of them, is a real problem. So the purpose of the quick strip was both to make it so that these things were much easier for people to find, uh, and so they were aware of them, and also make it so they were much easier to use. Now, at first we tried doing something that in, involved just using little uh, cards. They look like the little cards that you use to swipe with your, um, uh, at the hotel to get into your room. And you could have a card that uh, had uh, that would make the screen larger, <clears throat> and so you just take it and swipe it past the uh, edge of the computer, and the whole screen would get larger. But it, people are very often afraid to use the computer and afraid to use different kinds of things. We had one woman who came in, and she was squinting at the screen and real close to the screen, and so one of our people came by and and said, well, here, see these cards? It says here, make things larger. So you just swipe it like this, and the screen gets larger. And so she did, um, and the and it got larger. Oh, it was wonderful. And so she 
thanked her, and then later when she left, she came by again and said, oh, thank you very much. It was so much faster. It was so much easier today. Two days later, she was back, and she was squinting at the screen again. And so we came over and said, you know, um, you know, why didn't you use the car? And she goes, well, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I'm, I'm just afraid I'll break something. So even though it was there, signs all over the place, you can see here anywhere, computers, so there's signs all here telling you to use it. Um, it was just something different than they were used to, and so they were afraid uh, to try it. So um, the quick strip was the thing that we tried. So that's what led us to, to trying to do the quick strip, so that the uh, information, what the individual needed, um, was right there on the screen. <clears throat> And they would just be able to uh, click it and do it. So some of the things, you know, screen zoom we thought of in contrast. <clears throat> uh, people who have color vision problems, uh, this would automatically adjust the screen so that uh, things that were uh, the same color to them but were supposed to be different, like charts or things, uh, they could change. Um, they could adjust the mouse. And we took the most common things that needed to be changed about a mouse. There's, there's dozens of them. They're all buried in the control panel. And we brought those uh, forward. Um, we then uh, also made it so that if you wanted to do something else, uh, you could just click on more options and it would bring over here and it would tell you all of the other things that were available on that computer. So if you wanted to, for example, change the cursor more, you click and it would automatically open up the control panel to exactly the right place for you to go and, and do that. So we used a layering to make it so that simplifying by layering, make it so that it's real easy to do a few things, you want to do more, you can go more, etc. Now we were very surprised when they asked for a volume control. So I said, you want a button where you click and then you can change the volume. And they went, yes. And so I said, well, you know that right there, you can just click on this and change the volume. And many of them had no idea that you could click on this um, and change the volume. Others said, yes, but I don't know how to mute it because it never occurred to them to just click on a speaker here to, to mute it um, kind of a thing. Uh, and so this, they felt, was a much better. And even when we showed them this, they still wanted to have this. Uh, similarly, they needed to be able to clip pictures to take pictures of parts of the screen, this was at the community college, in order to use it. And we said, well, if you click on this and then you click on expand, there's a little screen snip thing here. Well, nobody knew that this screen snip tool was there. And it's sort of a, not the place you normally look for a screen snip tool is under the notifications tab. So again, we created a button that you just click. One click and you're now into uh, doing the, the screen snips for uh, copying and pasting in their work. Um, another thing that they found was um, one of the uh, teachers uh, was talking about the trouble the kids were having. And uh, she just wanted to give them an assignment whereby they would just uh, take this text and highlight all the things they thought were a problem and then they would go through and, and correct it with uh, tracking on. And after a couple of classes of going back and forth, because there's there's 11 menus and 200 little icons, and uh, the highlighting is on this one, and you go over here for the review, and there's, you know, things like this. Uh, the people were getting lost, and she finally gave up and just handed out uh, printed copies, little yellow markers and red pens, and had them do it that way, and then they'll scan them, and then turn them in, because they had to turn them in electronically. So. One of the things they asked is, you know, can you make this simpler? So we added a, a Microsoft simplification. You click on this and it makes it from a complicated uh, into a very simple uh, menu bar. Um, but for the community college, you know, this might be something that's good for somebody who's older, but for the community college, they said, well, that's not a problem. We need a bunch of the controls. It's just they're all over the place. So we created an essentials and so uh, instead of doing the simplify, you can do the essentials. And what it does is it brings all of the controls from all of the different uh, menus into one menu. So now here you have all of your, your save, new, you give your formatting, uh, you can have all your uh, font, you know, cross out, high, 
uh, underline, bold, etc. Um, your um, paragraph marking, things like this. Uh, you can even do uh, outlining and uh, things like this, filling. Uh, over here, inserting tables, pictures, charts. Uh, they even asked to make sure we had this one in there. Um, <clears throat> but then over here is, is uh, edit tracking and, and things you do. And we pulled the accessibility features and brought them here as well. So all in one uh, bar that made it more convenient for people to use. Um, there are also things that just highlighted, as I said before, where people come from. So we we're talking to the librarians and we said, well, what are the kinds of problems you most have to, to, to deal with? And they said, well, uh, people will come in and they will have their resume on a, on a USB. <clears throat> and they'll plug the USB into their computer and then they go looking for a librarian. And so we find them and we, we follow them back down, go down to whatever floor they're on, go over to the computer and we say, well, how can we help you? And they say, well, <clears throat> I have this USB and I put it in here and it's got my resume and I can't find it. And of course, you know, everybody knows you just uh, do the Windows key and then type, type File Explorer and then you come to here and then you scroll down to uh, this PC uh, and then you come down here and you look for the, the, um, uh, the item uh, and the resume. And, um, it, you know, it's going to be someplace on one of these, um, these things here. And in fact, it's on this thing right here that looks like a little toaster oven. Um, and you know, who would guess that that's what this uh, key is because it doesn't look anything like that. So we just created a little button where you can just click and it says open all USB drives and if you have a USB drive inserted it pops it up and there they go there's my resume so that they can find it uh, directly. So just things that we take for granted you know finding files navigating the file systems some of these individuals came up and um, they may have been on mobile technology but there's nothing about a mobile computing that prepares you for what Windows looks like and yet they need to learn Windows in order to go out and get a job. So how do we give them a step stone? How do we give them some curb cuts? How do we give them some ramps that they can use to help them to get up and, and uh, be able to use it? So this is one of the things that we did. Now, as we're working on this, uh, we've been trying to look at ways of making it even simpler. And so uh, one of the more recent ones we did uh, went even one step further. Whereas this one, you would have to, for example, change the screen size. You come here and you click on screen size and then you make it larger. Um, can you make it even easier? So on this one, we just put the controls directly there. So you want to make the screen size larger, you just make it larger. Uh, if you want to have a magnifier, you just close it, click magnifier and now you've got a magnifier. So much easier and more direct, especially if we're dealing with uh, people who have more trouble. We have a read text, so you can select any text in the computer and it will click on the read and it'll read it to you. So it can be in a Word document, it can be in a web page, uh, it can be an email. Some people who have dyslexia will type their text, but they can't actually read it well enough to make sure they don't have errors. Uh, what they see isn't exactly always what's on the page. But it's really easy for them to type it out, highlight it, click read text, and listen to it. And they can hear right away if there's mistakes. Uh, again, volume control, and, and again, high contrast. So if you need the high contrast, you can just click, um, and you have it. Um, and, uh, and then again, you can uh, click to turn it back off. So um, <clears throat> the... Um, Making it easier involves a number of things. First of all, making it easy to discover the uh, usability and accessibility features. Um, making sure that the features you need are right at your fingertips. So when we were doing this one for the community college, one of the things they asked for was, you see on the, on the, on the bar on the left edge, MyNova and Google Drive. So the students often need to keep going back there, all their homework, all their assignments, everything are there. The Google Drive is where they're supposed to do it. And again, many of the students just had trouble, like how do I get to a Google Drive? Where is it? Oh, just type the URL. What's a URL? And before you jump and say, oh, you know, the students, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, I will tell you that many of the students said, oh, this is going to be great for our teachers because 
the such and such teacher just you know is always you know lost or confused or things like this and this feature would be really good for them and things like this so it really goes across and we found the same kinds of things not at the community college but even at the university uh, when we heard people at the AJC say that they were afraid they might break the computer uh, we thought oh well that's you know because these people haven't you know have a lot of education then we heard it at the community college, and then we heard it at our research university. Students at the major research university here in Maryland, um, when we were talking to them and showing them to this and stuff, uh, and asking about their problems, and one of the things they said is, you know, when I sit down to a computer, you know, I'm just really afraid I'm going to break something um, when I'm just trying to use it or going into the control panel or something like, like this. So um, things that we take for granted. Uh, are not necessarily there. So making things that people need to have, again, as an on-ramp, uh, making sure that they're, uh, they're available um, at their fingertips. Um, and again, for seniors uh, and others, having things so just one click will get you to do it. So the final morphic, when we uh, get this thing completed, we'll be able to, first of all, expose features that are hidden in the devices so that you even know that they're there and so that they can be used by those who need them. So we use a layered approach, as we said, to bring the most used ones up front. Uh, and then you can customize it so that only the ones that you need are on the bar and the other ones are, are gone. So you can make it so that there's a standard bar when you sit down, but when you sign in, uh, the bar changes to be one that just has what you need to have on it. We can make commonly used features or even programs to be faster to get to and always shown so that when they, uh, you're looking at them and you're trying to go through uh, and move between different programs, uh, students who you know, get into one, how do I get out of this and get into another one, um, they're able to easily jump between them because they'll be right on the bar. It allows a person's settings to follow them across devices and platforms so that you can move even from a Mac to a Windows sit down to the computer and have the same uh, morphic bar with the, the features set up the way you want them to be. Uh, it can allow your assistive technologies to appear on any computer they need that you, that you need to use uh, at a school, a library, at work, or any place else that has uh, morphic uh, installed on their computers. And uh, it allows an individual to instantly change between setups. So, as you tire, for example, your skills may change uh, from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. Um, or if you want to focus now and play later, you could have it so that you can uh, have one setup where you've got mail and Facebook and, and everything going, and another setup where they're all turned off and all the notifications are turned off so that you can uh, focus and concentrate on what you're doing. Um, we can allow a person to have a new computer set up instantly. So if you go to a new computer, you get a new job, you go to an internship, uh, your computer dies and has to be replaced. Um, instead of taking a long time to get it set up um, for people to get the AT, etc., uh, you can just have your Morphic Profile automatically pull the programs, install them, configure them for you uh, all at once. Now, all of these items that are in light, you know, one, two, three, and five, um, are things you can do for yourself if you know how and they're not as convenient and you may not know about them and stuff. But four and six uh, are things that you actually can't do at all without Morphic. The ability to have things, uh, uh, the AT automatically show up wherever you go, the ability to set up a computer uh, instantly. So these are sort of unique uh, capabilities and both of those are based on this installation on demand capability we talked about. So let's look at some, some users. Um, we, uh, we can talk about a user, finally I can use uh, any computer at the library. So this is Sarah. And um, like many people with disabilities, she can only use computers in a special area of her library. Um, and even those computers didn't have the right AT or they weren't set up properly. Um, and the staff there, when she asks them about it, they basically say, well, you know, there it is, but they're not experts in all those AT either. Uh, but now with Morphic, 
uh, she can sit down to any computer in the library, including that special class she wanted to go to. She walks in, sits down at any computer, sits with her friends, uh, and her features show up on the computer. Um, Phil, and these are all uh, not real people, but they're real stories. In other words, they're, they're taken with real problems by real people. Uh, and uh, then we put a, a fictitious name on them, and then we show you how Morphic can address them. So, um, Phil, um, uh, internships are critical, both for learning and uh, for securing a job offer. Um, companies are often uh, nervous about hiring someone with a disability. They don't want to hire them and then have them not work out because, you know, they don't want to have to fire them. So I talked to one employer who says, I never hire anybody with a disability because if it ever didn't work out, I could never fire them. So I just never hire them. Um, so he wants to be able to use his internships to be able to go in and prove it. But last time he went, did one, it took three weeks before IT could get the purchase agreements in place to buy the AT, to get the AT screened and to get the AT. And by then he was so far behind all of his colleagues. But with Morphic, um, he can uh, come in, he just brings in his profile, um, the company can have a set of pre-scanned software that it's already uh, checked for security, etc. Um, and so he comes in, sits down, he plugs his, his preferences in, and in nine minutes, all of his AT is installed, all of it's configured, the computer is all set up, and it works just like his at home. Uh, Susan um, is an editor, and she works at home. But because of her disability, her skills and abilities change over the course of the day. So she starts off strong in the morning, but by mid-afternoon, her eyes can't read normal-sized text very well and her hands are tired. Uh, and constantly changing all the settings required just a lot of work and lost time. It just, you know, she just instead would go through without it. Well, with Morphic, she can have different setups and uh, as the day goes on, she just selects her tired settings and all of the settings change on her computer. Uh, she's now much more productive and she's less tired by the end of the day because she's not having to try to fight her way uh, through it today. Now, Josh uh, can't afford a computer, so he has to use the computer that he gets uh, from the university, only they rotate them. So he keeps getting new loaners and uh, having to set them all up over again. Also, if he ever reboots his computer, it wipes everything out because that's the way they have the, set, the computer set up for security. Um, but with Morphic, uh, whenever he logs into the computer, it automatically sets up just like it's his. So even though he owns no computer, every computer he sits down to is his computer. It's exactly the way he needs it to be. And when he's at the university, he doesn't have to carry the computer with him. Uh, he can actually just go and uh, be able to uh, use it in a way that would allow him to um, sit and use any of the computers at the campus. So he doesn't need to bring his computer with him. He can just sit down and use any computer anywhere on campus in any of the labs. And again, it's set up just like his. When he gets up, it changes back. Uh, now, Cynthia, she is getting ready to take a standardized placement test, and, and this is going to determine which university she gets into. And she's really bright, and she really wants to get into a good one, but she was worried that she's going to go in, and she heard all these horror stories about people who went in, and they sat down, and then the computer wasn't set up for them, and it was a wrong screen reader, uh, set to the wrong speed, um, and different settings, and the people spent half their time... Um, trying to figure out how to do things on the screen reader the way it was set up, she needs to focus just on her test. And so uh, with uh, Morphic, um, she's able to walk in. They have all these uh, sterile copies of the, of the AT. Uh, she walks in with just her little preference set, um, and it automatically sets her computer up. She sits down to take the test with a computer that behaves just like her home computer and she doesn't have to struggle or be distracted using different uh, computer and, and setup. Now, Janet, um, she's a, a vocational evaluation specialist, and so she has people come in all the time, and she's supposed to evaluate them. She has these uh, vocational evaluation uh, programs, job evaluation programs on her, uh, on her computer, but she has a couple problems. First of all, sometimes people come in, and, and they just 
they can't use it very well. They can't see very well. Um, uh, sometimes they come in with their own AT, but their AT is on their machine and her evaluation test software is on her machine. And so she doesn't really have any, any way of doing that. Uh, with Morphic, uh, she can just uh, install it on their machine, uh, pull uh, the, the preferences and settings, and then have her machine set up just like theirs. Also, for people who don't have AT and they just come in and they're having trouble, she can help them. She can say, oh, you know, well, what if we made this thing a little larger? And then she can try and uh, show them different things that would make it easier so they can not only leave with the results of the vocational evaluation, but also uh, setups that they can then take home and apply in their home computer or work computer or any other computer um, that will set them up so that they are uh, in better shape to be able to to work. So um, it not only uh, allows her to help them, but uh, they didn't have to worry about how they're going to take those things that she's uh, found that would help them and and transfer them to the next place that they need to, to use a computer. So we're working on three versions of Morphic. Um, the first we call Morphic Personal. And um, these all work on a Mac or a PC. Um, and um, you can uh, save uh, your AT settings to the cloud so that, uh, and this would be AT, uh, third-party AT, but also the built-in assistive technology features and the usability features in your computer. Then when you sit down to a different computer, it'll apply them instantly to that other computer. Um, so that's built into Morphic Personal. In addition, there's five sort of quick access functions on the bar, as you saw earlier, screen size, magnifier, read selected volume, and, and color and contrast uh, to make it easier for people to read. So that's in Morphic Personal. And this is going to be free. Um, and uh, anybody can, can get it uh, to do these functions. Uh, we then have uh, something called Morphic Community. And this is a, a subscription because it involves uh, additional service and stuff that, that somehow has to get paid for. This is all being released by Raising the Floor. Uh, which is a nonprofit organization. So um, trying to keep the costs down, but there are costs and, and they need to be recovered. So this is a subscription. Um, and it provides the ability for you to customize your Morphic bar so that you can change it, add things. Uh, there's a whole bunch of catalog of buttons and features. You saw a bunch of them earlier that you can choose from. Uh, you can also choose or create your own custom uh, buttons to do just what you want them to do. Um, you can make them so you just have one click that'll access a website or launch an app or even do a function in window. You can, sometimes you'd say, well, there's this thing that my friend uses, it's control shift Z V or something. And, uh, but you can just make it into a button. So if you're not somebody who remembers or can do complex but key functions, you just have a button, you just click and it automatically, uh, does the complex key function for you. Or you can make it so that um, one click will automatically call up a family member or friend. Um, so instead of saying, well, I'm going to click and then it's going to open up something which you then have to go and select the person and then you have to click the call, you can make it one click and it just calls them, kind of like a speed dial um, through. And uh, one of the things you can do with Morphic Community is you can make for an ultra easy to use uh, computer. So for example, um, here we have the uh, community using the um, Morphic bar. We used to call it a quick strip. Now it's a Morphic bar. Um, and it's vertical on the side uh, because this works better for, for people who are using the, the larger screen. Um, and this is for an older person. So they set this up for, for grandpa. And um, the, one of the things he likes to do is to, to call video with, with the kids. And... Um, the problem was that you first tell him, well, you have to then, first of all, you have to launch Skype. What do you mean launch Skype? Well, you find the program. What's a program? Well, a program is a bunch of, um, uh, never mind, just here's this little icon here. Just click on this thing, okay? And uh, he clicks on it. No, 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 you gotta click twice. Uh, click twice, yes, click, click. No, no, you gotta click twice fast. Okay, now, all right, now you have to, over in the directory here, you have to find uh, Jimmy, okay, all right? Then you click on him. Okay, now over on the right side of the screen, over here there's this little icon. See this icon that looks like 
yeah, this one here, right. Now you click on that, and then the menu drops down, and then you click on that button there, and then it calls them. And of course, tomorrow he doesn't remember any of that. But with Morphic, he just clicks, it pops up, and the only thing it says is, do you want video on or not? And if you say yes, no, and, and it calls. So you can have it, you know, that simple, so that you took what would be prohibitively complicated and you made it just really simple. Um, they also have this call uh, with the other side of the family where every Sunday everybody gets together. And so this one, instead of making a Skype call, what it does is it actually uh, uh, automatically logs them into a meeting room. Um, and it's on sort of a Zoom room. And um, so at the right, that time of day, he just comes and he clicks that one button and bingo, he's in a room and all the other faces of all of his kids and their kids, and they all get together and they have this sort of uh, spiel and everybody shows their stuff and tells jokes. Um, now, he also likes Woodworkers uh, Quarterly, so he has one that just opens up that website. He doesn't know what a website is, but but this is uh, like a, a, a website magazine, um, and he can just click on that. Um, if he has something he wants to have read it, he can just... Uh, you know, he highlights anything he has trouble, clicks read, and it reads it to him. Uh, he clicks on family photos, and he sees a slideshow of all of his kids' photos. Um, to him, he clicks, he sees photos. Uh, what's really happening is he's launching Google Photo Share in slideshow mode. Now, everybody else uses it like you would think you would use websites and stuff, but to him, one click, he sees what he wants, and then he likes the family tree. So this brings this to him. He's never used a computer. You could never get him near a computer, but if you can make it simple, and then later he wants more, and he may want more, and you can use it as a stepping stone to more, if he's able to, or if he forgets stuff, and the next day he can hardly remember, he just comes back, and, and he doesn't have to remember steps or anything else. He can just click. So these are the kinds of things that, that can be done. Uh, to make an ultra easy to use computer. Um, and you can also make it that you can install all of this and set it up and change it for the person all at a distance. So without ever visiting your grandfather or grandmother in person, you'd be able to call them on the phone, walk them through the installation. And then if they say, oh, could you add a button that does X? You can just go up on the website yourself and be able to um, just you, on your computer, change it in the, their, their settings, and then on their computer, suddenly they see an extra button that shows up on there. And again, we do it in a community fashion so that you could also have people at a, a community center or at your a place of worship um, that would do it for all of the members. So here we have someone who's doing it for church members and setting it up. They even put a button on there so that on uh, Sunday they can just click on one button and they can watch the service without having to understand what or how or who or whatever. They just click a button and suddenly they're, uh, quote, virtually uh, in church. So that's the Morphic community. And then we have Morphic Enterprise, and that's everything in community except this is now set up for working specifically with IT practices. Uh, the ability to use computers um, with AT and minutes as we talked, set it up as we talked about, um, versions that work in the company's cloud if they don't want to connect outside, and a cloudless version and something that will manage all of the assistive technology versions and licenses and things like that. So this was cranking along great until we hit COVID-19, in which case it wiped out not only all of our pilot studies, uh, it caused us to have to reverse direction on our case studies and try and do things remotely. Um, but worst of all, it killed all of the markets, um, the places that might actually be able to help cover the cost for, for doing this. Um, companies, uh, you know, budgets going backwards, uh, the schools, the libraries, you know, all of these places. So um, we're now in a process of trying to uh, uh, recover and see if we can survive the, the COVID-19 uh, pulling the rug out from underneath it. But our plan was to remove uh, launch Morphic Personal in August uh, and Morphic, Morphic Community in September and then Morphic Enterprise in, uh, in 2021. Um, we will see what we will be able to do at this point. Um, as I said, um, we want the Morphic Personal to be free, and, and, uh, but the Morphic Community and Enterprise uh, subsidizing it. But uh, everybody is um, 
is is up in the air so we will see what what we are able to do um, thank you very much uh, if you have any questions please feel free to uh, give me a call or send me an email uh, it's uh, gregvan at umd.edu